let the words of my mouth and the meditation of the heart of every one assembled here in this church may be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, I greet you all in the matchless name of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. I am thankful to God for having brought me here to preach the word of God and I thank your pastor, Reverend Benjamin Inbaraj, for having given me this opportunity to preach the word of God. Today, the whole Church of South India and the whole Church of South India, discipleship is the theme given. Therefore, I have chosen the topic, characteristics of a true disciple of Christ. Characteristics of a true disciple of Christ. We are all familiar with the story of Daniel in Lion's Den. I don't think anybody here would say I'd never heard that story or never heard about that incident recorded in the book of Daniel chapter 6. We are all familiar. And we all know the background also. Daniel and his three friends were, along with others, brought as captives to Babylon during King Nebuchadnezzar's time. And they were, when they were offered to offered the foods placed before idols, they said no to that. They will not pollute themselves by eating the food that was placed before idols. And they kept themselves pure with regard to eating. And then, now we read about King Darius. King Darius wanted to elevate Daniel. But the officials in that Babylon became envious of Daniel being getting promoted. And therefore, they plotted against Daniel in order to pull him down. And what happened? They could not digest Daniel getting promoted or elevated. And therefore, they wanted to somehow ill-advise the king, manipulate the king into passing an order, a harsh decree that only king must be worshipped on all the 30 days, on the following 30 days, only there should be worship of the king and not worship any other god in the whole country of Babylonia. They thought definitely they can trap Daniel and the punishment was to put anyone who violate this rule, this command of the king must be thrown into lion's den. That is what we find in 6th chapter of the book of Daniel. So, for 30 days, they must only worship the king. And what happened after that? Daniel, as usual, worshipped the Lord Je Jehovah, who brought them out of Egypt, brought Israelites out of Egypt. And he was a true worshipper of the Lord. In other words, he was a true disciple of the Lord and therefore he continued to worship. By doing that, he had to meet the consequences or pay the price of having violated the king's decree or order. And in this chapter, we first read about Daniel's, first point is Daniel's purity, personal purity and the integrity that he maintained. Personal purity, he was a man of personal purity and integrity. Let me read to you verse 3 and verse 4 from 6th chapter. Then this Daniel became distinguished above all other presidents and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. They, then the presidents and the satraph sought to find a ground for complaint against Daniel with regard to the kingdom, but they could not find no, find, they could, I'm sorry, they could find no ground, they could not find any fault, they could find no ground 
for complaint or any fault because he was faithful and no error or fault was found in him. And they said, we shall not find any ground. We could not find, we should not, shall not find any ground for complaint against Daniel unless we find it in connection with the law of his God. Unless we find it in connection with the law of his God. And therefore, they came to the conclusion that they can easily trap him only in the case of worship of God. He will not violate the law of God who said, you shall have only one God before you and worship him alone, not any image, not any idol. That was the first commandment given to the people of Israelites as we read in book of Exodus chapter 20 verses 1 to 3. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. So you should worship only the Lord God, Jehovah, who brought you out of Egypt. And therefore, Daniel continued that. But he maintained his personal purity according to the verses 4, 3 and 4. He led a faultless, flawless, spotless, blemishless life. Flawless, faultless, blemishless life. Therefore, they could not trap him in any other thing. He was a man with clean hands and a pure heart. He was a man with clean hands and a pure heart. Listen to what the psalmist says in his 15th Psalm. Who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell in your holy hill? He walks blamelessly and does what is right and speaks truth in his heart, who does not slander with his tongue and does no evil to his neighbor. So a man with clean hands and a pure heart. That's what Daniel was. And beloved, while we meditate upon the life of Daniel this morning on the topic of discipleship, how many of us can be true? Say to ourselves, I am leading a faultless life or flawless life. Can we truly say that? I am a man with clean hands and a pure heart. I have con not contaminated myself with the impurities of the world. Can we truly say that? We need to examine ourselves. The mark of a true disciple is to lead a pure, holy life not getting contaminated. And now, secondly, we find Daniel was a praying and praising person. Secondly, we find he was a man of prayer and praise. Prayer and praise. Let me read to you verse 10 of Daniel chapter 6. When the law was promulgated, Daniel knew that the document had been signed. The document had been signed. The king was so innocent that immediately he gave his consent to the ill advice of the other people, other officials, and signed the document. But Daniel knew that the document had been signed. He went to his house where he had windows in his upper chamber open towards Jerusalem, he got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he had done before, as he had done previously. So, he continued to spend time in prayer three times a day and gave thanks to God. For what? For this order? Yes, might have been. In the midst of trials and tribulations, one can praise God. Lord, you know what is best for me. And you will take care of me. Even in the midst of trials and tribulations. Even if I have to be thrown to, before the lions. Thrown into the lions den. I know. You will fulfill your purpose, your will in my life. That was the confidence that Daniel had. And therefore, he continued his prayer. He prayed regularly. Not haphazardly or once in a while. And there was a prayer chamber room, special room for prayer. He allotted a place for prayer. Thank God there was no cell phone at that time to be interrupted. 
again and again by cell phone. Even while praying, we take our cell phone, see what message had come. Even in the church, we do that. So, but Daniel had private chamber. To spend time alone with the Lord. How many of us do that? And he knelt before God. Why? In order to have concentration. Kneeling before God is to have concentration. To concentrate on one's prayer. And then a person who prays before God can stand erect before human others. A person who prays before God and have communion with God will be able to stand boldly with confidence in the front of others, even in the front of leaders or whoever it might be. Your boss, you can stand erect. Listen to how many times he prayed? Three times. Do you know why? Listen to what the psalmist says in his 55th Psalm, verse 55th Psalm, verse 17. Evening and morning and at noon I utter my complaint and moan. And the Lord hears my voice. The Lord hears my voice. Therefore, he prayed thrice a day. Three times a day. And his prayer was with thanksgiving. It says, he thanked God. Can we thank God under these kind of circumstances? When problems we have to encounter, when we face too many trials and tribulations, in the passage that was read to us as the epistle portion from 6th chapter of 2nd Corinthians was read to us. Let me read to you from verse 4 of 2nd Corinthians chapter 6. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way by great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonment, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By how? By purity knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, and genuine love. By truthful speech, by, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left. That's what Paul writes in the epistle portion that was read to us this morning. And Paul again writes in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, do not be worried but present your request with thanksgiving to God. Present your request with thanksgiving to God. Do not be hurried or worried until you are buried. Okay? Do not be hurried or worried until you are buried. So, present your request with thanksgiving to God. Then the peace of God which transcends all human understanding as well as misunderstanding will keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God. The peace of God, if you want to experience Present your request to God with thanksgiving. That's what Paul writes in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. And so, he was a praying man and a praising man. How many of us spend time in prayer and thank God? That is why Paul again writes, Give thanks to God in all circumstances in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Give thanks to God in all circumstances. And he was able to give thanks to God in the midst of this kind of decree being passed by the king. Issued, the order issued by the king. Then, we, he was a man of cons consistency and persistence. Consistency and persistence. Persistency and consistency. Why? Because... He continued to pray daily. He continued to pray daily. And the king himself said, you worship God regularly. The king himself said, let me read to you verse 20. The king declared to Daniel, O Daniel, servants of the living God, as your God, whom you serve continually, consistently, being able to deliver you from the lions. You worship God continually, consistent. there was consistency. You maintain that. And there was persistence in praying to God. Perseverance. And therefore, that God 
I am sure would have been able to deliver you. That's what the king thought. A man of consistency, a man of persistence. Verse 10, verse 16 and verse 20. Verse 10, verse 16 and verse 20. He continued to pray. He went to his house where he had windows in his upper chamber. He got down on his knees and prayed and gave thanks before God as he had done previously. As he had done previously. And again in verse 16. May your God whom you serve, the king said to Daniel, may your God whom you serve continually deliver you. This comes from the mouth of the king, a Gentile king. Isn't that something strange? May your God whom you serve continually will definitely rescue you, deliver you, liberate you. This is, being, this is becoming a witness in a foreign land, in a very troublesome situation where your faith is tested. So, he prayed continually. We all know the parable that Jesus told about the widow in Luke chapter 18 who persistently appealed to the judge in Luke 18 verses 1 to 8. And then, he did not compromise. Daniel did not compromise. That is the great thing. How many of us compromise? He did not say, King is my superior. I must always obey my superior. Therefore, forget God. I must save my position. I must do something in order to remain in power. I am elevated to the highest office, but I will continue. I, if I want to continue, I will definitely obey the king. He did not say that. He said, no, no. He did not compromise. Let me uh, tell something that I read in a book. Obedience to God involves disobedience to irrational, irrational, ungodly authority. Obedience to God involves disobedience to ungodly, irrational, unreasonable orders. It is defiance of that order. How many of us have the courage and boldness? Such courage and boldness to say, no, I will not yield to these pressures from outside. Paul writes in Romans chapter 12, verse 12, 2, do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be it transformed by the renewal of your mind. Do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be it transformed by the renewal of your minds, in order to know the will of God, which is pleasing, which is perfect, which is good. The will of God is good, perfect and pleasing. In order to comprehend the will of God, understand the will of God, to know the will of God, do not conform to the pattern of the world. What does it mean? Don't dance according to the tunes of the world. And J.B. Phillips, a Bible translator, has translated this, don't allow the world to squeeze you into its own mold. Isn't that a beautiful translation? Don't allow the world to squeeze you into its own mold. Many of us are being squeezed, pressurized, and we allow the world to squeeze into its own mold. But Daniel said no. And finally we find, sorry, fifthly we find Daniel was a persecuted person. He was thrown into the lion's den, we know. So, having been thrown into the lion's den, he should have spent sleepless night with fear and trembling. If a lion enters into the church, how many of us will stay here? We will immediately run away. Try to run away, escape. Isn't it? If a lion enters into the church. Being thrown before lions, he, wouldn't, he could not have spent night with sleep. He could not have had peaceful sleep. And therefore, he could have kept himself awake. But praying to God, Lord, you know where I am. And even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, 
I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And therefore, I am ready to face this. And Martin Luther, it was Martin Luther who said, when he was threatened, after protesting against the Roman authorities, the Pope, the church authorities, and others, he said, if they do any harm to you, they asked him, if they do any harm to you and try to murder you or kill you in one way or the other, what would you do? He said, I am immortal. Everybody was shocked when he said, I am immortal until God's purpose in me and through me is fulfilled. How long are you immortal? Until God's purpose in me and through me is fulfilled, I will remain immortal. So God knows when I have to close my eyes, breathe my last breath. He knows. And therefore, until such time, I will remain immortal. What a bold statement. Martin Luther. And listen to what the psalmist says in verse Psalm 34, which was read to us as the reading from the book of Psalms. Psalm 34, verses 6 and 7. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. Because the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. The angel of the Lord surrounds those who fear him, and the Lord delivers them through his angels. This is what Psalmist wrote. And Daniel also experienced the same protection from the Lord. He was a protected man, a protected, persecuted man, but protected by the Lord. Persecuted man, protected by the Lord. Then comes, he became not only a protected person, but also persecuted, but protected. And then he became a promoted and prosperous person. That is the end of the story. That is the end of the chapter. He was not eaten away by lions. The Lord protected him. And finally, he became a promoted and prosperous person. If you read from verse 25, you will know how the king reacted. Then the king wrote to all the people's nations, languages that dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree now. These people said, you have already passed a decree which cannot be amended or altered or corrected or changed. That's what the Babylonian officials told the king. But now the king issues another decree, order, saying, in all my royal dominion, people are to tremble and peer before the God of Daniel. See? People have to tremble before have fear of God before the God of Daniel. For he alone is the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his dominion shall be to the end. He delivers, rescues, he works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. He who has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. He is the only true living God. This is the confession of the king. The whole nation had to listen to the king, voice of the king. And final, in 28th verse, so this Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius. The Daniel prospered. So he was not only promoted, he was also, he became a prosperous man. Prosperous man. Do you know why? The reason, let me read to you in 6th chapter, in the first portion of the chapter, we find that in verse 3, then this Daniel became distinguished above all others because an excellent spirit was in him. An excellent spirit was in him. What was that spirit? Turn to what King Pharaoh said about Joseph in Genesis chapter 47, 41. Let me read to you. Verse 37, the proposal pleased Pharaoh and all his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, 
can we find a man like this, like Joseph? Can we find a man like Joseph in whom is the spirit of God? Is the spirit of God. So, the secret behind his success or he became prosperous, victorious, it is because of the spirit of God, the excellent spirit, the spirit of God, or in other words, the Holy Spirit. Samuel Shoemaker was a British theologian. I do not know how many of you heard him. I might have quoted him a few times. Samuel Shoemaker was a British theologian who wrote several books and he was a great preacher in England. And he said, unless there is within us that which is above us, unless there is within us that which is above us, we shall soon yield to that which is around us. Only when you have something from above, unless there is within us that which comes from above, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, within us, we shall soon yield to that which is around us. We will be sque squeezed by the world into its own mold. We will conform to the pattern of the world. We will dance according to the tunes of the world. We become worldly and not godly. And therefore, we find that this man, Daniel, the characteristics of a true disciple, that he maintained personal purity and integrity with clean hands and a pure heart. And secondly, he was a praying and praising man, a man of consistency and man of persistence. And he was a persecuted man, but was delivered. Persecuted man, unprotected man by the Lord. Finally, he became a prosperous man, a promoted man and a prosperous man because the Spirit of God was with me in, me, in Daniel. And today, beloved, how are we going to leave the church? Are we going to lead victorious Christian life? Then we must have the Spirit of God. So that we can say, no to the devil, no to the flesh, no to the world. We should stop dancing according to the tunes of the world, being pressurized by the world, and being squeezed into the mold of the world. Let us remain faithful to the Lord God, whom we believe, and say Sunday after Sunday, we come to the church and profess our faith by saying the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene's Creed. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Do we really? Let us examine ourselves. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for speaking to us through the written word of the scripture and through the spoken word of the message. We thank you, Lord, for opening our eyes to see new truths, reminding us of the old truths that we already heard. And at the same time, we also thank you, Lord, for enabling us to see ourselves as we really are, admit our failures, to live up to your expectation, to fulfill your purpose, to accomplish your will. Forgive us, Lord. Help us to leave the church as not only hearers of the word, but doers of the word, taking lessons of Daniel's life and applying it in our lives in order to stand with courage and confidence in the midst of trials and tribulations. Not allowing the world to contaminate us. Help us not to be contaminated, polluted by the impurities of the world, but maintain purity, holiness, integrity, truthfulness and honesty. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen.